Let's talk about agent states. By default, an agent is stateless when it's just doing individual runs. So it doesn't know anything about all the variables from different runs, any resources, any connections that were done, even message history and so on. In the last video, we covered sessions, how we can keep track of states and sessions, memory, history of the chat so we can have multi-turn conversations but also basically just separate users for multi-user ai agent applications so state is any kind of data that the agent needs to maintain throughout runs so when we keep calling the agent could be an interaction could be a chat session that we're doing we need to maintain all the data could be our variables connections any type of data resource database connection and so on we need to maintain that when we keep repeating and keep calling our agent over so we have full control over everything when we have agent states and keep track of that and basically just have our agent management system so the whole flow here is that our agent has a session state we add a state variable to the session state and then we can keep just giving that session state into our AI agent. Then we update the session state in tool calls or other functions and the flows that we're doing. So it could be that we call a tool to do some research on the web. Then it updates the session state in there so we can give it to the agent the next run. The current session state is shared with the model. The session state is stored with the agent's session and is persisted in a database. It can both be in memory, but we can also write it out to a database. So this makes it available across different execution cycles. So when we have sessions, we have states, we kind of like start to build all this memory and history around our agents. This is very important when we build full scale AI agent systems, could be individual agents, could also be a full team of agents. When we build out full team of agents, we can actually control what agents has access to what sessions and so on, and also what states. So let's jump inside my code editor and take a look at how we can use agent states with Agno framework to import our agent from agno.agent. We set up our OpenAI API key. Now we're going to write a function here, which is basically just a tool that we're going to give to our agent. So it has access to that. It will do the reasoning, choose what tools to use, and then it will come up with a response and also take that action. So when we create an instance of our AI agent, we have our add item. We give it our item that we want to add. So over here, we're just adding an item to a shopping list. We can do anything inside our functions. Any tool can basically just be a Python function. So now we take our agent.session state. We pass in our agent object to our function. We grab the session state shopping list. So this will just be a dictionary or a list as example here. So we can grab the key. So the session state is the dictionary. We have a list here with the shopping list. And then we append the item, which we call the function with. Then we return the shopping list is now our new updated session state shopping list. We create an instance of our agent. We use the OpenAI chat model. Then we can set our session state. This can be anything. You can put whatever you want in here in the session state. Could be database connections, could be any function tools, anything that you want to keep track of in your state across multiple runs or in your agent team. The shopping list, we initialize that as empty. We have a tool here available for the agent, so you can choose to add a new item depending on what input or what query you give to the agent. The instructions here, current state, shopping list is this, add state and message. So basically just we want to add that inside our output response and the output should be marked down. Now we can print the response out here, add milk, eggs and bread to the shopping list and we want to stream the results so we don't wait for the whole flow or like the whole run to be over before we get the results, but we stream it while it's generating. Then we can print the final session state down here at the bottom so we can access the sage session state for any agent at any time. We can update it at any time and it will be basically be persistent across multiple runs. We can save it in memory. We can save it in our database together with our sessions and pretty much our states as we went over in the previous videos. So right now, let's just go in, open up a new terminal and let's run the program. So Python agent state.py, add milk, eggs and bread to the shopping list. This is our input. Now we are using tool call. It chooses to use free tool call. So we want to add an item with milk, eggs and bread. Could also just be a list. 
if we specified that inside our tool call. But this is the reasoning that the agent is doing by itself. This is the difference between just a large language model and AI agents. A lot of people, they're talking about AI agents and so on, but what it is is actually just a LLM. If you want to use AI agents, we need to build all these functions. We have the brain with the model, we have the body with the tools, so it can take interactions, it can do reasoning, thinking, it can take different actions autonomously. So it's not just a pipeline where we have a chain of LLM calls that we take the input, we take the output, and that output will be the input to the next LLM. This is more navigating autonomously based on the user's intent. We used three items here, or like add three items. We get the response back. The item has been successfully added to the shopping list. The current shopping list is milk, eggs, and bread. And we also print out our final session state at the bottom. This is pretty awesome. Again, we see all the streaming results here while it's running, but this is how we can have agent states across multiple runs. We can keep track of it. And now we can basically just run it again and it will keep the shopping list here.